Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the article from PBS on the Obama State of the Union. And I'm just uh, citing this because I wanted to show you um, how distorted the official news is. We know the presidential cycle, I've covered it before, that uh, for the last three presidential terms, dual terms that we've had, which have been Obama, Bush II, and Clinton, uh, they prop up the economy during the president's um, eight years, and then it crashes during the transition to the next person. Uh, will there be a prop up for the next person? There could be. There could be some kind of hyperinflationary thing. But if you look at this, Obama is saying that anybody who says America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. Now, the only people peddling fiction are these liars, these politicians. These people are professional liars. What they do for a living is lie. Uh, they couldn't tell the truth to save their lives. So let me show you from another country an example of the lies. Now, I've covered this many, many times before. Uh, this is Dolar today from Venezuela. And uh, the official exchange rate, you can see it down here at the bottom. They have some bizarre series of uh, convoluted rates. You can see here we go from the official 6.3 to double that uh, to another rate that's 10 times that and then nearly double that. And then so uh, we're talking about a rate that's off by more than 100 fold. And uh, again, I covered the fact that Venez the Venezuelan president, uh, Nicolas Maduro, this madman, this bus driver, this uh, lunatic that's in charge of Venezuela, um, is blaming everyone but himself uh, when we have an official rate that is 150 times uh, the real rate. So I wanted to show you the statistics uh, unfortunately, on trading economics, they've now made it a member site. So I'm just going to do a, a summary. And then we're going to get into Bill Holter, the latest from Bill Holter, and Saudi Arabia. And this uh, question about whether Saudi Arabia is going to bail to the east. But let's first look at the economic statistics coming out of Venezuela. So uh, when we look at these, I'm just going to go through the summaries here because, again, the charts aren't there. I would click on these and show you the charts but uh, it's gone to a member site, so we can't do that. So uh, if we just think about what Barack Obama said in his State of the Union speech, uh, that the people who are criticizing him are peddling fiction, well, that's exactly what uh, Nicolas Maduro is saying. So you can see the official numbers here uh, for Venezuela show a GDP growth rate of 6.8%. That's pretty good. Uh, they've got an official unemployment rate of 6.1%. That's pretty good. Now, the inflation rate, they just recently admitted the inflation rate, and they just recently admitted this interest rate. So those are two things they just fessed up to. Uh, very soon, they're going to fess up to the rest. The balance of trade, you can see, is positive. Government debt to GDP, that's only 49%. Uh, that's twice as good as the United States, who just crossed over 100%. Uh, the currency, here you go. There's the official rate, 6.29. Uh, and we know it's uh, nearly 950. Uh, the stock market at 14,000 is up a good sevenfold from just a few years ago. Uh, the 10 year bonds yielding 11%. Um, GDP growth rate, 6.8%. And uh, so you can go down through those. It, it, it all looks great. But uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, the Venezuelan economy is actually collapsing right now. Uh, they don't have enough hard currency to get toilet paper. Uh, there are people starving in Venezuela. But you're not going to find that out by listening to the official news sources. They're just not going to tell you. Now, let's get over to the Bill Holter article in Saudi Arabia because this is really important. 
Uh, this is the latest from Bill Holter. I'm going to go ahead and read the whole thing, and then I'm going to address this uh, Saudi issue. Dear Segas, what a tangled web the global geopolitical situation has become. Geopolitics and finance have always been interrelated, but recently much more so. As many readers know, I have speculated we would be hit over the head with a truth bomb from the East, most likely from Mr. Putin himself. Just this week, Britain has alleged Mr. Putin personally ordered a hit on an ex-KGB agent for calling him a pedophile, New York Post article. Another story came out that Turkey shot down a NATO helicopter, which was which made no press coverage at all in the West. Also, Victoria Newland recently traveled to Russia and was review, refused an audience by Mr. Putin. This after John Kerry had a meeting where he went in to it saying Assad must go and came out saying Assad can stay. Why all of this now? I would simply say... This reeks of desperation and also a very dangerous strategy to attack Mr. Putin personally. I say dangerous because it raises the likelihood of response from him. Can you imagine the outrage were Russia to accuse President Obama or the Prime Minister Cameron of Britain for ordering the murder of someone who called them a pedophile? I'm not even going to go to that. <laughs> uh, uh, how many pedophiles are in Britain. Before going any further, I believe nearly all of what we are seeing is centered by and on the petrodollar. Will it survive or be replaced? In my opinion, it is no longer if, but when, and by what it will be replaced with. Just over the last two weeks, we've seen three very important yet interrelated events. First, the sanctions against Iran in place over the last 35 years were lifted. Along with this comes the ability for Iran to sell oil and they will now have access to up to $150 billion worth of assets and accounts previously frozen as reported by many credible non-government sources. Uh, credible. The day after we saw 10 US captured sailors on their knees as they were said to have strayed into Iranian waters, the official US account has changed at least twice. We've heard mechanical failure at first. This is unlikely as there were reportedly two separate vessels. If one had mechanical problems, the other could have tied off and either towed it or held it steady until help could arrive. Then the story changed to navigational problems. This one, I believe, but not the official story. They strayed into Iranian waters. Again, if it was just one boat, maybe their navigation system malfunctioned. At the same time, their communications failed, maybe, but both boats at the same time lost their comm and navigation systems. Probably a better chance one of these sailors winning the Powerball lottery two weeks in a row. Speculation on my part, I believe the electronics were somehow hacked or blocked, just as happened with Donald Cook in the Black Sea in late 2014. Just a couple of days ago, President Xi of China met with Iranian leaders one day and then the Saudis the following day. We can only speculate what was discussed, but surely oil was the centerpiece. Naturally, China wants to make and diversify oil supply deals from them both. We have no proof, but I believe it is a very good bet that President Xi told the Saudis they would be expected to accept yuan for settlement instead of dollars. There is no denying the Chinese have done everything in their power to prepare for the dollar being dumped as the world's reserve currency. You can argue about timing. You can argue about intent, as China and Russia have set up, uh, set up non-Western clearing facilities similar to SWIFT, but without any Western interference, trade deals, currency hubs, trading banks, and even gold and oil exchanges where the dollar will not be welcome. This is not tough to tie all of this together. I ask you this, what would the world look like the day following a truth bomb dropped by Mr. Putin and the Chinese? Would Americans even notice if he documented several false flags or frauds embedded in the U.S. finance, such as outright monetization of U.S. treasuries? Now, I don't agree or believe that there will be any information about false flags. Um, uh, whether you're talking about uh, moon missions or false flags or nuclear weapons tests or any of this other stuff. Uh, it's very clear to me that all of these powers are in bed with each other. Uh, they're not going to expose themselves by exposing the other. Uh, but 
on this issue of outright monetization of U.S. Treasuries. This is a very important issue. This is something that Jim Willie is talking about right now. Uh, where is the money coming from? We're still running that one trillion dollar deficit uh, a year. It's eight hundred billion right now, but it's roughly one trillion. Where is the money coming from? Back to the article. No, most certainly not. Americans would, however, notice if financial markets collapsed or were shut down. Russia and China know full well the situation in the West. It is a bankruptcy waiting to happen as everything is fractional reserve and running on maximum margin while the underlying system is shrinking and no longer supplying enough liquidity. The way I see it, the stage is truly set for a financial attack on anything and everything American it is implausible for the Saudis to announce they will sell oil in yuan to China, is it? Or Iran to withdraw their funds from U.S. institutions and then bid for gold with these funds? If the East does, in fact, have jamming or hacking capability of Western technology, is it far-fetched for them to show it very publicly in one or several situations? How would the bookies react if they saw a prize fighter enter one of the later rounds with his hands tied behind his back. You can laugh at the above speculation if you choose, but it is all quite plausible and actually probable if you look at where things are and what posturing has already been done leading up to this. Western markets, all markets, are a fraud. Our treasury market is one where the biggest buyer is ourself. The Fed and the ESF, we have already seen $1 trillion of foreign reserves offloaded with no effect on yield. Now, this is really important. I can't emphasize this enough. If you have a $1 trillion of treasuries of any nation sold, that will impact the yield of that bond. Bond prices are directly related to yield. There's no way you can have a massive sale on any bond without having the yield rise. Well, that's what we've seen. The yield on U.S. Treasuries has actually fallen as there has been a dumping of over a trillion dollars. No effect on yield nor the dollar itself and no accounting anywhere as to who bought these offloaded central bank reserves. Accounting fraud and no rule of law, nothing to see. Please move along. You can laugh if you want and say Saudi Arabia will never move toward the east. Saudi Arabia is now in very dire straits financially. Who do you think they will side with when Western markets melt down? Do you really believe they will go down trying to support our dollar? The, the stage has already been set. The East knows the West has been bankrupted. They know we have no gold left because they have it. They can see the finances of the various cities, states, and federal government. They know the situation and derivatives is one giant mountain of dynamite waiting for a spark. They know our rule of law is gone and bail-ins of depositor funds is next. We are monetizing their sales of treasury securities. We are fooling no one except ourselves. And by ourselves, I'm talking about the vast majority of the population who have grown to rely on the government for everything. Everyone knows we're broke. Yet ask anyone the odds uh, highly favor you will hear the government will never let it happen. Even if you are silly enough to believe this, you must ask yourself, what are the ramifications when markets become make-believe standing watch? So uh, make-believe, that is the Obama economy. It's make-believe. Now, I wanted to look at this Saudi Arabian uh, export market and import market. Because the big question you want to ask is if it's true that uh, Saudi Arabia is going to go east, then you have to ask yourself what does what do the Saudis import and what do the Saudis export? Well, we already know what the Saudis export. They export oil. And uh, they're like Venezuela in the way they become extremely over-reliant on oil. And I read a commentary today from someone talking about um, processing the, the crude and uh, not exporting just the raw crude, but actually uh, 
doing processed exports, and that's something they should have done. They didn't do. They're they're exporting raw crude. But again, the raw numbers from Saudi Arabia, you can see here, here are from 2014. These are the latest numbers we can get. These are the top 10 imports. Now, when I read off these top 10 imports from Saudi Arabia, and uh, I want you to put yourself in the place of a politician from Saudi Arabia. So I don't want you to think of yourself as an American or as an Australian or as a, a, a person from Britain or someone from the EU, but I want you to think of yourself as someone who is a citizen of Saudi Arabia. And you have to make a decision as, let's say, you're a politician or a leader in their parliament or whatever government structure they have. Uh, if you want to continue to sell your oil for U.S. dollars, or it's more in your interest to sell your oil denominated in Chinese yuan. So the main question you have to ask is, what goods do you import? Now, let's look here. These are the top 10 imports from 2014. Number one is vehicles at 14.9%. Are the majority of vehicles imported into Saudi Arabia made in the United States? I don't think so. Um, I don't know the number. You look it up. Machines, engines, pumps, 14.5%. Are those made in the U.S.? Probably not. Electronic equipment, I can guarantee you that's not made in the U.S. That's made in Asia. Oil, well, that's the refineries. Maybe a part of that is coming back from the U.S., but probably not. Iron or steel products, we know China dominates that. Aircraft, spacecraft, well, China's taking that over. Iron and steel, China's taking that over. Cereals, okay, well, that might be the U.S., percentage of that. Pharmaceuticals, yeah, the U.S. has a big share of that. Again, it's only 2.8%, but uh, will these others honor the patents for these pharmaceuticals, most of which would really don't do the job, but uh, that's a tiny... Part, and then medical technical equipment. So when you look at these imports from Saudi Arabia, and again, this is $152 billion, that's their imports. Uh, most of that stuff doesn't come from the U.S. It comes from some other country. Now let's look at their total exports. You can see in the same year that they had $152.4 billion in imports, they had $340 uh, $2.28 billion in exports. So Saudi Arabia is exporting more than twice as much as they're importing. Now you tell me, can the Saudis drop the U.S. dollar? It seems to me pretty clear they can drop it tomorrow if they want to. So again, back to Obama's claim that to anyone claiming America uh, the American economy is in decline, is peddling fiction. I would have to say that the current leaders of America are peddling fiction because the decline is coming and it's coming fast. And we'll talk to you next time.